So uh, welcome to the Protecting Your Nest podcast. Do you want to have better sex? Well, today's episode will help you do just that, not just because it's one of the most enjoyable human experiences, but because it's another way we can protect our nest. In fact, my wife and I joked when I told her about today's topic that maybe, just maybe, one of the S's in my NEST acronym should remind us of the importance of having a healthy sex life. So, so, so how does sex help protect us, protect us and protect our nest? Well, the benefits are many. Uh, healthy sex actually supports our immune system, improves our bladder control in women, reduces blood pressure, and decreases heart attack risk. You know, it's really a great form of exercise. It also decreases pain, decreases the risk of prostate cancer, and, and many of you are aware that it also reduces stress and improves sleep, which is part of my NEST acronym as well. So I'm so happy to have a guest who will provide some additional knowledge so that we can receive all of those great benefits. Today's guest is Brooke Hazen. Brooke is an organic farmer, lifelong athlete, physical coach, and a health and fitness enthusiast. A Southern California native, Brooke grew up loving the ocean and the natural world. His affinity for the land, healthy living, and natural foods led him to study agriculture at Humboldt State. In 2001, Brooke realized his vision to grow nutritious, organic farm-to-table foods under his own brand when he purchased 88 acres of pasture land in the beautiful Northern California farming region. He now cultivates apples, citrus, medicinal herbs, and high polyphenol olives, and has now authored his new book, You Are Not Broken, a holistic guide for men and women to heal the pathways of sexual dysfunction and restore relational harmony together, which will be released uh, literally uh, a week after uh, this podcast, a week or two in April. Uh, so with that, Brooke, I welcome you to the Protecting Your Nest podcast. Thank you so much for having me on. It's an honor. Yeah, well, I'm excited because so many of my patients um, come to me, and it's not just the men, <laughs> the women as well uh, come sure. to me, and they're really interested in learning more about their sexual health and and I really think it's important that we provide a pathway for them to heal in that area. And I'm, I'm this, depending on women to be there to help spread this message. Wow, so important. And uh, they are uh, just as vital on this journey. And I, I know that for so many people who uh, start to dedicate their life to helping people this way, they may have their own story to tell. So let's start our conversation with the audience hearing your story, you know, talk to me a little bit about the story of healing that you actually had personally. Okay, that's a great segue into this. Uh, you know, uh, a few years ago, I started experiencing the symptoms of erectile dysfunction, and I really had no idea what was happening. I was afraid. I went immediately to Western medicine for answers, which I was unable to find. Um, and I went through uh, a process of experimenting with uh, pharmaceutical ED drugs, but none of them worked well and they all had side effects. And uh, so anyways, I went through a, a depression. I went through a deep depression for weeks at a time. And uh, I really didn't have any answers for what was happening. And so I got to a point where I just completely had no answers and gave up. Um, I, at that point, I've always been a spiritual person and I prayed to God. I had never had a situation like this where there was something so gripping and, and caused a, a loss of confidence uh, in myself like this um, and gone to God with such a, a task at hand, but that's what I did. I, I And this time I prayed for a healing miracle, not just a, a specific uh, drug that could help me, but a true miracle healing. And when I did that prayer and I let go to God, it started a whole process for me, which continued um, with this letting go. Um, much of the uh, many of the first healing modalities that I go through in my book are all involve letting go. They involve uh, letting go of our addiction to pornography, to uh, orgasm, to mating based behaviors. 
uh, to our what we eat, to uh, how often we eat, and even letting go of our blood with blood donation, which I'll go over with you at some point in this podcast. Um, but by letting go, um, we're able to uh, lay ourselves bare, uh, stripped of all our addictions and preconceptions and cultural peer pressure, uh, uh, and, and lay ourselves bare in front of God uh, so that we can allow the light to come into us and heal us. God is really the ultimate healer. That is what is behind all, all of natural healing. Um, and when we are able to let go uh, and let God in, uh, we allow the natural intelligence, which is innate in all the cells of our body to do its light work and fulfill its mandate of restoring balance to our body, mind and soul uh, to perfect balance. Um, so we're just providing the building blocks and the opportunities for our body to do what it knows best to do rather than importing what we feel is best for our body to do. And as you know, what you're practicing with holistic health, uh, Western mainstream medicine approach through pharmaceuticals and surgeries merely hover around the symptoms. They do not actually get to the root cause. Uh, and through my journey, I was able to not only get to the root cause of what's causing neurological and organic ED, but I was able to actually go beyond that into uh, overall physical, mental, and spiritual health, as well as relational health, uh, because it's all tied together. Holistic health really encompasses everything, which is why I feel holistic health is the best approach to ED, and which is why my book offers I believe maybe one of the first opportunities for people to follow the protocols in my book and be able to not only heal themselves sexually through holistic means, but also a whole journey beyond that of, of reclaiming their vibrancy, their youth and their vitality, uh, which is a lot what you talk about too, with the diet and with exercise. And so I go into all that in the book. I love it. And when I think about the, uh, the the rope and the acronym, it deals with emotion, uh, emotions. And, and, and the whole nest and rope acronym is really a functional medicine uh, foundational, you know, the roots of the functional medicine tree. So it really speaks to emotions. But if you really look at that, the emotions also uh, taught, you know, it really speaks to your spiritual journey as well. And I think a lot of people who I see in clinic are very solidly grounded in their faith. And but but what's really important, uh, besides understanding the root causes of why we get sick, is to really, really understand that your journey is not just uh, to acknowledge uh, you have a relationship, a spiritual relationship, but it's also to uh, understand you have to do your part right so it's like a, it's a partnership so you have to so for anybody listening who has ever you know said a prayer you know or asked the universe for help you really got to do your part too and some of that is doing your own research you know the same kind of research it sounds like Rick did to find answers so if you if you seek you, you shall find it's very simple so I really appreciate you sharing how you kind of come came to this place but and i also know that a lot of people who suffer uh from you know uh issues around sexual health they have expectations about what their sexual sh performance should look like and and some people you know think that you know um you know as i get older things are gonna be the same or they're they're not gonna work at all so I just want you to talk a little bit, you know, based on your research, you know, what are some expectations for uh, a, a person as they age in terms of what they should expect sexually? Because I think if we don't understand some of that, it's going to have expectations that are maybe too high or maybe expectations sure. that are too low. So what's your thoughts? Yeah, on that? well, uh, I feel if people really do let go and embrace the healing modalities I recommend in my book and they practice all of them, uh, they're going to see massive transformations. And, uh, you know, uh, what I want to talk about first is the, uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand what's happening with pornography. Uh, but 
that's the first place I started. And, and to heal these neurological dysfunctions we have um, is the first step because, um, you know, dopamine, we talk about dopamine. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting neurochemical and receptors uh, because dopamine really is like the will and the drive we have in life. Uh, but it, it, uh, it, it doesn't necessarily satisfy us. Uh, so what's happening is we, you know, it drives us in life, but um, people are actually getting in dopamine addictions where they're using bad habits. So uh, if we have good habits and we're, we have normal levels of dopamine and we're balanced, um, that's a healthy, good thing because we can get satisfaction in life through positive behaviors. But when it goes towards negative behaviors, it can be incredibly depressing for us and it can deplete our dopamine levels. So the first thing to understand, and I'm going to go through a lot of interesting things in the podcast today that are cutting edge, but um, there is a massive epidemic happening that's uh, doctors are in Western medicine and really even natural medicine are unaware how to resolve. Um, and that's the epidemic of young men who should have no business with erectile dysfunction uh, experiencing erectile dysfunction. Now, they have no answers for this. So what they do is they automatically prescribe what the only solution they have, pharmaceutical EDs, yeah. uh, drugs. And um, basically, there's no solution. They're giving these young men a lifetime prescription of EDs with absolutely no uh, answer for or, or solution for how they can recover a vibrant sexual health life ever again in their life. So what I'm doing is I'm empowering all of us uh, through my own experience and through the research and through the healing modalities I suggest to, re to empower themselves that we do not have to uh, accept a lifetime prescription of pharmaceutical ED drugs. We can have a vibrant sexual health life into old age as long as we strip ourselves of these addictions. And that's the first part of, of where we start is stripping ourselves of the dopamine addiction to pornography, as well as orgasm, which is ejaculation for men and, and uh, orgasm for women. Um, uh, people aren't aware of, of these effects that uh, powerful effects these have, but with pornography, it's a superhuman stimulus. Uh, and it's not just the actual watching the pornography, it's actually the engagement of ejaculation or orgasm with pornography that's so powerful. Um, and what happens is it's actually depleting the dopamine levels and receptors in our brains to the same levels as the, it is for morphine and cocaine addicts. The brain actually does not differentiate between a physical addiction and a neurological addiction. And that's important to know because most people write off pornography addiction as non-existent or not a big deal. But actually people on a, on a massive level right now in the West or throughout the world are experiencing uh, a uh, neurological based erectile dysfunction. And they're, they're in an addictive cycle just like physical addictions but nobody's really acknowledging it. And how can we expect uh, men and women when they have a, an extreme dopamine addiction where their dopamine levels are, and receptors are so low to be able to uh, become the vibrant, you know, uh, youthful, um, vital beings that God meant for us to be when we're, we're, we're trying to deal with an addiction? <laughs> uh, so that's the first step is to re recover neurological health. Um, and so the techniques that give you a vibrant sexual health, most of the, of what we see happening to men and women of all ages can be healed through just the neurological um, healing modalities I recommend in my book, which is, uh, you know, there's a big movement now of young men that have, and women that have, uh, have figured out what's happening and they're taking this leap of faith of quitting pornography, uh, quitting masturbation of pornography, and the next step is to graduate on to semen retention. And uh, because again, ejaculation is something we're not aware, has such an immense toll on men. It is uh, incredibly depleting um, 
physically, mentally, relationally. Um, and uh, we just aren't aware of that. And uh, so graduating on to semen retention, practicing semen retention, uh, abstaining from pornography, these are all, again, things of letting go, letting go techniques where it doesn't cost you a cent. We're just stopping the addictions, addictive behavior, these uh, which cultural peer, pre peer pressure uh, makes us feel is healthy for us, but it's actually poisonous to us. All these things are poisonous to us. We're um, also, we'll get into food too. Like uh, you talk about the di how important diet is. I like to say, it's what goes in your mouth, stupid. I, I'm sorry about the, it's sort of a joke, but it really is. I mean, uh, all these massive things that are happening to us as a people, you know, nationally and, and throughout the world, at least in the West, predominantly, are related to what we eat, breathe, and drink. And that could be uh, what we eat, as well as breathing in or drinking uh, heavy metals, uh, which I will talk to you about is now being linked with arteriosclerosis um, and causes all kinds of uh, toxic uh, behavior patterns that are similar to psychological diagnoses and neurodegenerative disease, disease symptoms. Um, and we'll talk about that. I have solutions for all this. I really have solutions. Nobody should be dying of heart, heart disease, uh, heart attacks anymore with the modalities out of my book, with the chelation IV therapies, the uh, trial to assess chelation therapy, uh, government studies that have been done, uh, other studies that have shown the amazing benefits of chelation therapy, um, donating blood once a year even, reduces the chance of heart attack by 88%. Now, why aren't we telling people about this? A study of 22,765 people uh, showed with a full course of disodium EDTA, sorry, disodium EDTA, showed an 87% market improvement in vascular disease. Uh, of 363,000 of the 407,000 patients that were tested in this study in 1991, they estimated that 363,000 of those 407,000 patients could have avoided bypass surgery. Um, the TACT-1 study, which is the trial to assess chelation therapy, uh, the first study, the second study is ongoing, but this first study showed a 51% reduction in cardiac events and a 43% reduction in the mortality in patients with diabetes. Now, I'm going to repeat that again. The TACT-1 study, a government study, showed a 51% reduction in cardiac events and a 43% reduction in mortality in patients with diabetes after receiving a full course of disodium EDTA IV, which is a non-invasive natural healing modality. Um, I'm a big fan of IVs. I'm, I have a lot of other, you know, donating Blood regularly, I encourage everyone to get out there and I do it. I donate blood regularly. I donate uh, mm -hmm. three times a year. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it um, donating blood, um, it reduces oxidative stress and it increases antioxidant capacity. Uh, it reduces the uh, iron levels, which are equated with, um, you know, a lot of diseases, you know. Uh, so um, these are simple things we can do. So. All these things are free, but except the IVs and the other, we start to build up and we start to add to our sexual and physical health. Now, I have to say right now that sexual health and physical health are inseparable. I mean, we're talking about our neurology, our physical body, um, our overall body organism. Is The health of that is inseparable from sexual health. Now, there's this myth that somehow a misconception really that really Western medicine has made us believe that you can take a pill and you could heal your sexual function. That's not how it works. A pill can never replace true healing. Um, it takes it takes dedication and time and energy and resources to recover your full sexual function. Now, the easiest thing is giving up pornography and ejaculation orgasm. That is simple. And that's the first step. Once you do that, we can start 
applying this renewed vigor and energy and dopamine levels and drive we have in our life towards our physical health, towards adding things in like weightlifting, uh, pellet testosterone replacement therapy, balancing. This is more for older men now I'm talking, but um, pellet TRT is, is excellent. We can do weight training, which has been linked with, uh, with uh, decreasing that gene that, or that, that trigger that causes obesity. I was just listening to a study from, uh, from Dr. Richard Johnson, who's been studying obesity for 25 years. And he's talking about how, just like you talk about, that the glucose trigger um, with soft drinks, which are dehydrating, but loaded with sugars is, is one of the worst things you can do. Um, but also the uh, refined flours and grains like that. Um, uh, he is also mentioning the um, reducing salt intake because dehydration, which I talk about in my book and how important it is to drink water that's linked with healthy sexual function, uh, making sure we are, we're hydrated well, and also weight resistance, like I just mentioned. Those are what he recommends, um, you know, just like you recommend with your diet. The diet I recommend is very similar to yours. It's a, you were vegetarian for seven years, I think you said, and um, I recommend a plant-based diet uh, that is low in um, just some whole grains, you know, definitely not refined, uh, refined flours. And, uh, you know, and, and, and intelligent eating, you know, like uh, superfoods, uh, you know, if you're going to have grains, whole grains like quinoa, you know, and it's funny because people, uh, they're, they're terrified of, of diet changes, but there's really nothing to be afraid of. You know, our body and our brain are so plastic and resilient that it's meant to be challenged. And once you go through that challenge, you'll find that everything changes in your, in your brain chemistry. You, your, your addictions change to healthy lifestyle choices. And you actually enjoy those foods. You actually appreciate it. Whereas when we're loading ourselves up with three meals a day and unhealthy diet choices, we actually start to become numb to our healthy habits. And, and, and that's what I talk about in my book. I want us to become, reclaim our vitality, uh, reclaim our youthfulness and our vibrancy. That, and I, I want us all to lay our fears at the feet of God and ask ourselves, what are we afraid of? What is stopping us from making these choices? Now, I know that decrease, you know, chronically low dopamine levels are a hindrance to, mm -hmm. to wanting to make these changes in our life. And that's why the first step is to, to, to strip ourselves of these addictions, these negative habits we have in life that our culture has taught us is healthy, but is actually poisonous to us. Uh, you know, that's the first step. When you, when you let all that go, um, you're now able to uh, reclaim that vitality environment. So, you know, you can, I just want us to really ask that question right now. Everyone listening right now, what is blocking you from becoming your ideal self? Because I can assure you, that what you see as your ideal self in, in the future or in the distance and where you are right now is not as far as you think. And I'm testament to that. Well, I am uh, blown away with, you know, some of the talking points because uh, nobody who, uh, you know, decided to watch this video or to listen to the podcast would have thought that, you know, donating blood would have been uh, one of the topics to, uh, suggest would be helpful. Uh, so that's yes. pretty amazing. And we just had uh, a uh, a notification uh, fairly recently about the fact that a lot of people are not doing any blood during the pandemic. And uh, so there's a little bit of a shortage. And uh, what better incentive than to help somebody else while helping yourself? So that was a new one for me. That's definitely a new one. I, I, I'm curious uh, briefly about this depletion. I mean, I think most men understand that when they're active, and I would argue for both sexes, uh, when they have an orgasm, um, that's going to deplete them. So I know physically there's a change. And, and when you spoke about that, was, that the, was there more to it than just that? Because is there more that you're saying you're going to deplete yeah. yourself of? Just want you to yeah, so it's that. a... It's a massive transformation that happens. It's a process of decreased dopamine and increased prolactin. 
that weaves up and down after an ejaculation or, or an or mainly an ejaculation, this is much more fierce for men than for women. I've found the effect is very intense for men that this process of dropping drastically decreased dopamine and, and increased prolactin weaves up and down for up to two weeks. In fact, some of the, the biggest reverberations can be in two weeks. Um, mm. Now, most men are ejaculating several times a day or at least once a day or at least every couple of few days in with the habits we've developed um, in our current Western culture. Uh, so what that means is we have overlapping uh, dopamine crash cycles. Um, now, what this does is it causes an immediate process of replenishing the vital sperm that's been lost, pulling all the most precious resources from our body um, because the sperm, you know, the procreation is what our mammalian brain has taught us to, to put above all else um, and which ties into the, the mating based behavior. So, you know, it has to do with relationships and versus body behaviors, you know, and that's a whole nother topic that I get into in the book, but um, basically going back to what you said about the, you know, what happens is, uh, you know, an extreme drop, and it causes fatigue, mood imbalance, and also an inability to connect in a relationship or really in life, you know, because we are losing that dopamine. Um, every time that we watch and ejaculate to pornography or orgasm pornography, um, we are desensitizing ourselves to life, to the actual pornography, and to our relationships. Uh, because it's a process just like cocaine and morphine of an addictive cycle. Uh, what happens is uh, men and women who never imagined themselves watching certain types of pornography start to have to watch that to keep this same trigger of dopamine happening. Um, and some young men get to the point where they can not even, uh, well, men of all ages and women of all ages get to the point where they can no longer actually uh, get aroused to even their most specific neurologically specific pornography that gets them aroused. And because that's what happens is the reason pornography is so strong, the addiction to pornography is because it's so specific to each individual's brain. Each one of us has a certain type of thing that gets us aroused. Well, pornography insidiously fits that that desire in a, in a poisonous way where it, it eats away at our dopamine levels. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's very powerful. So thank you. Again, our minds are everything and, and people really think guys are different than women, but our, we're emotional. We, you know, what we think affects how we perform. All of these things are true. And uh, so I appreciate you kind of going in that direction. Uh, and I do agree with you that diet is so critical. And during those seven or eight years when I was a uh, vegetarian, I felt great. All the studies that I use when I compare low carb to uh, low fat clearly state that they're both <laughs> very helpful. So I think as people are listening, and you know, a lot of my listeners are low carb, but as people are listening, you really want to listen to your body. Your body will tell you to answer. And we really just want to stay away from processed foods, uh, you know, things like that, because when you, when you eat real food, uh, most of the time, rather you're doing uh, low carb, low fat, Mediterranean, whatever, you're going to be in such a better place. Um, and, and again, it's a holistic approach. So we eat well, we move our body, we reduce our stress, we get enough sleep, we start, in, you know, maybe learning about some of the stuff we'll, you know, talk about now uh, in terms of what's available. But before we maybe talk a little bit about some more of the technology piece, and some of the advances, um, you know, just briefly, I mean, you mentioned uh, Viagra uh, a moment ago, and, and, and men are more comfortable talking about, you know, issues around uh, sexual health now because we have medicine, we can destroy pills at this stuff, which is not the best approach, but it does lead to discussion. So, uh, but I know that conversations around erectile dysfunction can make people anxious, can make people feel depressed, 
partly because they may be concerned about their ability to perform. But, but I guess I want you to comment a little bit about how important it is to talk about these issues, rather you're in clinic or at home, because if we don't talk about these issues, there won't be a solution. So talk a little bit about how important that is. So, you know, I've gone through the journey along with many, many men and women, hundreds of thousands at this point that have joined the NOFAP movement, which is NOFAP is a, a funny acronym for basically no masturbation, uh, mm -hmm. uh, no, no pornography, no masturbation, no orgasm. It's called no PMO for short. So that's no pornography, no masturbation, no orgasm. Um, now, uh, when we all go through this process, uh, it's a very, very difficult process, like our food addictions to, to dopamine, all these things are, are challenging. And that's why I, I encourage people to, first and foremost, look to God for guidance, because we're gonna need that strength to make these massive changes. Um, but, um, basically, uh, once men and women go through this, this challenge, it's usually a 90 day, no fat challenge of, uh, quitting pornography, masturbation, orgasm. Um, you know, uh, it's important during that time for men and women to, cause I include women cause women also have addictions to pornography and they're in the no fat movement too. But it's important for both to, for anyone in this process to seek coaching from uh, people that have been through this process, as well as uh, talk with their partners about what they're doing. And there shouldn't be any shame. You know, that's the thing around pornography addiction. It seems like there's an extra amount of shame because people don't understand it. But really, this is no different than an addiction to a drug. Um, it really is a drug on a neurological level. Um, and has the same exact cycles of dopamine depletion that the drugs give you. Um, so um, being clear with your partner about what's happening is incredibly important. For women that are hearing this podcast and reading my book, uh, bringing this up to their, their man that may be addicted to uh, pornography is really important because, uh, you know, the statistics are that Weekly, 84% uh, of men and 25% of women are uh, watching pornography weekly. Um, you know, there's men that are literally having a relationship with their iPhone and their iPad or device because uh, their brains cannot differentiate between what they're watching and, and ejaculating or masturbating to. Mm. And what's reality so they actually believe they're having a successful campaign of spreading maximum genetic diversity with the most beautiful women in the world uh, and their heads are buried to their phone while life is passing them by in reality yeah it, that's it's, what's happening it's, yeah it's 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 the extreme of um uh, you know, pleasure, I guess, if you have this extreme scenario that you're experiencing and visualizing, again, at some point, the real person in front of you uh, is not going to have the same impact, and you may have a, a skewed view of what a healthy sexual encounter should look like, because what's happening with these movies, I'm sure, is a whole lot of extra, you know, a whole lot of uh, sensationalism oh, yeah. in some ways. It's all kind of orchestrated in a way. And if that's required every time you're intimate, that I could see how that's going to be a huge problem. So yeah, it's mom, essentially geared for men's neurology. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I'm not surprised. And that's that's not a good thing. Yeah. Um, your your thoughts. So let's talk a little bit about some you know advances. I you know I did have a guess. Um, on a previous episode, I think it was episode 73, Dr. Tracy uh, Gappin, and he talked about the James Wave technology where you use mm. ultrasonic technology to yeah. improve yeah. the blood flow. Fair, fairly new. Most of the urologists in my health system, you know, they're not really uh, up to that yet. But anyway, sure. I still know that there's things out there. So I guess what I want to dive into a little bit uh, is let's talk a little bit about 
some of the things that you have found that are available to people, uh, some old, okay. some new, sure, that sure. you probably are like, I hadn't really heard of that before. Because what I really yeah, love yeah. about a, a, a functional medicine doctor in training, I'll be finished with my master's in decision this year, right? Um, I'm hoping that as a doctor in training, I'll uh, have additional tools that I can bring to the table that will help patients you always want to be that doctor that could figure something out that the other doctors could, right? Or any yeah. other clinic. Yeah. It's not because they're not smart. It's because you're open to seeing uh, different things in front of you. Like you mentioned earlier, like, look at the research. And the research says that this uh, chelation therapy works. I mean, but what conventionally trained doctor would even be thinking about that, right? So, you know, know. So, so let's talk a little bit about what you discovered so people can kind of start to add this to their list of things to consider? So I started alone from scratch because I had no roadmap in front of me. I had God by my side and I had a willpower and drive to want to, to heal this naturally. I had to, I didn't have any other choice. I was facing the devastating loss of my sexual health uh, unless I found a holistic modality. Um, so it's important to remember again that there's sort of two different kinds of ED. Um, there's neurologically based ED, which is called porn induced erectile dysfunction. I've been talking about that. Um, and that's where semen retention is actually incredibly healing for erectile dysfunction. Um, and so that's one of the modalities, uh, two of the major modalities we practice is that I recommend in my book is, you know, uh, refraining from pornography and refraining from ejaculation during sex. Um, that's uh, the neurological side of ED um, and can resolve definitely a lot of the, most of the younger men's issues, but I truly believe that it can resolve a lot of older men's issues too. Now for older men that still feel like they want to reclaim some of this vitality, uh, I, that's, that's, we're getting into what's called organic ED. Uh, so, the mainstream Western approach uh, through pharmaceuticals is to target the endothelial system. Um, what we look for is basic markers with ED or testosterone is our hormonal levels, testosterone, which is why I address that with pellet testosterone replacement therapy, which is, I don't know if you've heard of pellet testosterone replacement therapy, but it's the most natural form. It's a, mm -hmm. I believe it's even made from a plant material, but uh, it actually is, uh, very consistent and with your body's cycles. So it pulls consistently from your body what it needs as opposed to injections or patches. Um, now for women that pellet TRT has been shown to uh, reduce breast cancer tumors and to alleviate uh, all menopausal symptoms. Um, so they'll look at hormonal, they'll look at uh, any sort of venous leaks, which is usually not an issue, but you, you look through an MRI for that. And then they'll look at the um, endothelial system. So I started looking at the endothelial system and, um, and basically what I've come up with was uh, antioxidants, uh, IVs, um, like, uh, so, you know, figuring out why getting to the root cause of why we are not functioning in our nitric oxide system um, in, in a holistic way. Like we could keep, you know, jumpstarting our nitric oxide system through pharmaceuticals, but you, you know, what's the source of that nitric oxide dysfunction in the first place that pharmaceuticals are, are simply trying to just cover up as, as symptoms. Um, so, what I found was that there are, uh, through what we eat um, and uh, through uh, heavy metals, I found that heavy metals are a big culprit, um, that uh, we're, we're, we're creating uh, oxidation and free radical damage to our endothelial system. We're basically creating a conglomeration of, of uh, plaque uh, and heavy metals and, uh, you know, uh, calcification um, that 
we can resolve with IEs. We can resolve that with, uh, as the studies, TAC-1 study shows and these other studies and, and tons of experiential evidence shows, we can actually break apart with EDTA the, the, the heavy metal problem as well as the calcification problem. And then the cholesterol problem we can resolve with Plaque-X, which is phosphatidylcholine or PC for short, it's called phosphatidylcholine. And that's a, this is a natural, PC is a natural, um, makes up all our cell walls. So it's derived from soybean, this is natural. EDTA is a chemical, but it's, uh, you know, sort of a uh, greenwashed chemical. We're using it for holistic reasons to get to the curative, uh, you know, source of what's uh, causing this problem. But we can um, also use IVs like antioxidants, uh, like um, glutathione is a great one. It's been shown to increase nitric oxide and, and to um, you know, help with uh, vascular um, health. Um, and it does these things because it's basically clearing up the free radicals that are the source of the problem in the endothelial system. Um, free radicals from, again, diet, from heavy metals. So it's breaking apart and getting rid of chelating out these heavy metals. Um, and it's providing certain IVs like glutathione and poly MVA are, um, are getting rid of the uh, source of free radicals. There's uh, NAD um, is one that I've been uh, trying out a lot lately. It increases your um, mitochondrial health. So it's like it gives you increased energy as well as it um, has been shown to help repair those damaged, um, uh, you know, um, uh, neurological like uh, receptor sites mm -hmm. um, and like from dopamine damage, they, they use it in alcohol addiction. It can be used for porn addiction from decreased dopamine sites because it's the same thing. Um, so those are some of the IVs that I recommend as well as supplements. There's, there's antioxidant supplements we could take and all these things are basically uh, helping to clear out the free radicals that are, that are sourcing through our um, endothelial system and are uh, basically clogging or blocking our, our endothelial cells from producing healthy levels of nitric oxide. Um, so it's a real uh, holistic curative and preventative approach that gets to the root source of the problem without dangerous pharmaceuticals and surgeries and expenses too. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they, in that study I mentioned before, uh, you know, where they estimated they could have avoided almost all of the bypass surgeries with just one course of EDTA chelation. Mm -hmm. they, it, they estimated they could have saved $8 billion that year. So these mm -hmm. are also uh, expensive. Uh, whereas we're talking about uh, not relatively expensive, we should really be uh, practicing this on a major level. And I do feel this is the wave of the future, the kind of medicine you're practicing and the, that the holistic uh, medical field is practicing right now, I do believe is where we are going to be in the future. I think that the people are going to demand it. They're tired of, of not getting to the root source of the problem. They're tired of the side effects. They're tired of never getting healthy. They're tired of not being feeling vibrant and vital. And they don't know why. You know, there's so many um, myths and preconceptions mm -hmm. and poisons, really, that um, you know, America is feeding us through corporations. You know, um, and we're we've been really good. We're really good at, at actually practicing all these sort of uh, you know things that we're told to do by corporate America. Um, we, uh, you know, are excellent at, uh, you know, mimicking the, uh, you know, or, uh, recording the, the, the mantras, the, 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 the mantras that they're telling us that we should do. Um, so, um, I think that's why we need to think for ourselves. It's important that we, um, don't just take everything that we are told at face value by either a doctor or by corporate America, um, I think that we need to completely throw all this out and, and look from a scientific viewpoint what actually helps us because um, the mainstream medical system is not accepting on a large scale what these uh, chelation IVs can do. 
for people and what plaque X can do. In fact, the FDA continues to sort of hinder and harass a bit with trying to get these on a whole, with through the naturopathic world. Um, so we really, as a people, we need to demand that these are our lives. You know, nobody's life should be lost uh, because of, you know, being pressured into using bypass surgeries and, and statins, you know? Um, and there's a misconception around uh, LDL cholesterol um, that we think that's bad, but we're actually showing now that statins are interfering with um, our LDL cholesterol. It's actually produced by our liver to help as an antioxidant, antiviral um, for where we have free radical damage and endothelial. Western medicine is completely missing the root source of arteriosclerosis. Mm. Um, they, it's coming from what we eat and the heavy metals and pollutants uh, that are causing um, free radical damage throughout our body. Um, and that's what's causing arteriosclerosis. Yeah. Um, and that's what's causing ED on an mm -hmm. organic level. Mm -hmm. So that's the discoveries I've made. And, I, and yeah. you can also break up, uh, I'll talk about EPAT, you mentioned EPAT, extracorporeal pulse activation mm -hmm. technology. That's been very effective. We've been um, experimenting with that in conjunction with John Hopkins at um, a sexual clinic that I've been going to with using it not just on the tops and uh, sides briefly, which some people do, um, but actually uh, going to top sides, bottoms, uh, the Alcox canal, which is between the anus and, and the lingam and uh, the surrounding, like the mons pubis, which is above, as well as the uh, cura, cura, which is in the sides. Um, anywhere where we have supporting blood vessels and where we have uh, capillaries in our, our lingam, uh, it's been incredibly effective to break up uh, plaque buildup in the lingam. So we're able to actually clear up a lot of these issues on all levels. You could take mild, medium, or severe arteriosclerosis, and when you can you combine it with a healthy diet and exercise, we can actually clear up um, from the inside out and outside in plaque and and calcification and um, you know heavy metals and build up the, the cause of these blockages in our system because right now mainstream Western medicine is not resolving any of it with the statins. Mm -hmm. In fact, there this one study is showing an increased deaths from cardiac um, arrest as well as uh, cancers because of statins because it's yeah. um, actually taking away our body's only uh, protection from arteriosclerosis or from free radicals which is right so arteriosclerosis is really a symptom of damage that's taking place from free radicals but mainstream western medicine is not getting to the free radicals they're bypassing that and just yeah. continuing to it's focusing on the wrong thing. I mean, uh, I, I again, I sat with a patient uh, recently and uh, we were trying to decide about statins. And I'll be honest, I'm happy to report and I'll be making a video about this uh, probably even today uh, that the uh, American Heart Association, when they when they review all the diagnostic tests that you can use to uh, decide if you need to be on a statin or antiplatelet like aspirin, right? They made the decision that the uh, coronary artery calcium score test was the winner in terms of a good predictor. And the, 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 the win is that you will have a diabetic who will typically be given a statin as a default decision. And what they found in the studies is that the need to do that is not necessary if you have a zero calcium score. So now you can at least take a portion of the people who are uh, being asked to take statins with the side effects that you've mentioned and not be in a position to do that. But again, what I say to my patients is, you know, um, cholesterol is something that helps to heal your cells um, and repair. And What's happened in what a conventional medicine is that it's like, you know, just like the alien looking down on us from the sky. Whenever they see a fire, they see, uh, you know, fire trucks, right? So they assume that the fire trucks are causing problems. In reality, they're trying to put out the fire 
And yeah, that's what yeah. cholesterol is. It's really there to help us. Now, too much cholesterol for reasons that have nothing to do with cholesterol, inflammation and uh, oxidative stress is why we have too much cholesterol. But if we certainly focus on why we have too much cholesterol instead of trying to get the fire people, which is the cholesterol and its analogy, uh, we would do much better. So it is, it's just rethinking. And, and again, my hope by having guests like you and, uh, and learning the things I'm learning is that we start to rethink how we uh, view these things, because if we stay in this tunnel vision that won't allow us to think outside of that, then we'll miss opportunities to help people. So I, I was really uh, you know, intrigued by uh, some of your comments. I agree that the body uh, uh, needs to have some antioxidant activity to balance the oxidation. I will say out loud, however, that uh, you know, the body is so complex, so you need a little bit of you know, uh, yin and yang kind of going. So you do need, so there are times when you want your body to, uh, you know, have a little bit of a response. And then there are times when you want to put out that fire. You know, your body, you know, I think glutathione in my training was like the master antioxidant, probably the most powerful nervous system, right? And it really does combat oxidative stress and helps to detoxify the body, et cetera. And I think we just have to think, balance. And I say all of that to say that what better way to have balance than to have the right diet, than to have some exercise in your life, than to reduce stress, than to get enough sleep. So if you do those things, your need for uh, external sources of antioxidants starts to diminish a little bit because your body will have the capacity to uh, deal with that quite uh, naturally. One one follow-up comment about going back to um, your your uh, semen retention recommendation for the right person at the right time. So, you know, I, I kind of chuckle when I think about that because all the guys I know, that's what they do it for, right? They have intimacy, so they uh, can yeah. release. Uh, so, but, so what you're saying though, is that if it's done excessively, you're not saying, you know, never do it, but you're saying if you release semen too often, that's gonna potentially create a problem. Well, it's funny because it's another one of these paradoxes where the uh, it actually does the opposite of what we think. It actually increases uh, performance and uh, sensitivity and enjoyment. It actually, uh, you know, most men ejaculate before uh, women are, are just getting going. And um, so this actually increases your partner's um, enjoyability of the experience. Um, but the longer you... You know, every time, you, okay, I, this is the way I'd put it, that, you know, ejaculation was really meant for more procreative sex, and, uh, you know, semen retention is more for recreational sex. So, most of the time, we're practicing recreational sex. We're not actually trying to have a baby, but we're actually, every time we are ejaculating, we're depleting our energy levels, and um, this is a whole nother topic that recovering chi sexual energy is so critical for a lot of us, especially as we get older, we've um, our recovery time is 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 not as uh, long, and so um, you know we start to get depleted levels of chi sexual energy of our our sexual energy, um, and this is physical and it's 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 energetic, it's it's everything. But basically, um, yeah, the the longer you go, uh, the, the the you develop other benefits beyond chi sexual energy, which is chi energy. So we, we're actually able to develop um, other kinds of what we call superpowers. When these are really just these God-given qualities we have, which are, you know, clarity, you know, mood balance, um, inspiration, creativity, um, you know, all these wonderful qualities um, that we're able to flourish in life because um, the we're not losing our chi energy. Our, our basically chi energy is life energy. It's like God inside of us. We're not just releasing that out all the time uh, into a. <laughs> if you're masturbating, it's just a toilet. But if you're ha- if you're having if you're with a woman, then it would be during sexual intercourse. But so long story short, I would say that personally, I have not ejaculated since I started this process, which was almost three years ago. Um, 
And uh, most men freak out when they hear that. Most people, I will say at this point, freak out when you bring up any of the healing modalities that you and I recommend. When it comes to dopamine addictions, whether that's food or it's ejaculation, mating-based behaviors or pornography, our brains are gonna kick back hard when we try and strip ourselves of those addictions. And that's all part of the process. You know, people don't understand that there's a ton of myths around it. They, oh my God, I'm gonna get blue balls. Oh, I won't be able to handle it. I've never, I don't even know what blue balls is. I think it's a myth because really it's just your sexual energy. You're so used to just releasing it out all the time and externally that when you start to hold it in, you don't know what to do with all that excess energy. So you channel it into developing your passions in life, into your physical body, into your career, um, into your relationship. And that's where this transfers into relationships. We're able to practice Karetsa, Tantra, or Tao, um, where we um, practice bonding behaviors based on, rather than the goal of just simply ejaculating, you know, climactic based sex, that's just not really the end goal. We're just, it, it will happen, but it's not the sole goal. We're actually developing other bonding behaviors, which are long lasting, you know, because again, getting into this whole mating versus bonding behaviors, it's a complex topic, but uh, basically our mammalian brain has evolved over hundreds of thousands of years to, to develop two major old behavior pathways, which is mating and bonding behaviors. Um, and so uh, the mating behavior is sort of this instinctive, um, you know, drive that we have to, 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 to spread maximum genetic diversity with as many different women as we can. And it's really insidious to, you know, long-term relationships. Um, so what these other Eastern traditions through, you know, have been practicing for millennia does is it, supplants that with bonding behaviors, which satisfy that intense mating behavior we have, which we can't suppress. It's always going to be there, but it satisfies that while developing long lasting relationships through the bonding behaviors, through semen retention and through, um, you know, not totally driven towards just the ejaculation phase, but actually enjoying the whole process, the foreplay, mm -hmm. The, the deep listening, the eye gazing, the caressing, the sensual play, um, the communication, um, developing these very critical uh, relational behaviors, which our women are looking for um, and, and, and they are starved for right now because the pornography epidemic has created a relationship epidemic for women. And it's deeply saddening because women are unable to to uh, satisfy themselves on a relational level with men because men are completely being destroyed by the neurology of pornographic and climactic driven addiction. This is complicated because in order for this approach to work, it would require two people who understand uh, what we're trying to achieve because uh, so many, I would imagine that um, a female who has a partner, and I know we have, uh, you know, different ways of looking at this, but listen, if you have a partner who has not uh, ejaculated, they may perceive that as I'm not satisfying him. So, yes, that's right. if she's, so we have to, you know, so if anybody takes this journey, you really got to have two partners who are completely uh, fully engaged, understand what we're trying to achieve by doing this. Now, What's interesting, I know you had some addictive things you kind of spoke about that you were working through. Uh, just like a person that's doing uh, low fat or low carb, right? And they're making change, right? There's levels to this. So my question is, is it the level of commitment you've made where you're saying three years, right? What about a guy who has not had any uh, I'll say a, a addictive behavior that has caused harm, uh, just trying to improve their sexual function. Um, yeah. Would it is it okay for that person to maybe periodically not release, but then, you know, uh, obviously do it sometimes because there's some level of enjoyment. So what's your just? I just want to clarify that because we have levels of okay. people who are going to so, do this. All right. So 
what I experienced is uh, is a uh, is is a full body orgasm without semen ejaculation without semen release. So Man, talk to me. Okay, so that what that means is you get the same feeling of ejaculation. You actually ejaculate, but the semen doesn't come out because during the process you are you know pulling out if you get too excited. You're prolonging the experience with your partner. Um, and then when you get to that point of ejaculation and you cannot control yourself anymore, you practice the kegels, which are um, mm -hmm. the uh, kegel exercises I recommend in my book is is been shown to to help with uh, organic ED, um, but uh, it also is incredibly handy I found for um, avoiding ejaculation. So what you happens is you, your body shakes, your you get a full body orgasm. You 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 still get the same feeling of uh, satisfaction from an ejaculation, but you don't have that. It's kind of, some people like in eject like semen release to almost like a involuntary reflex where you're mm -hmm. sneezing or so all you're doing is blocking that semen from being lost because that's where you get the intense cycles of depletion and uh, mood imbalances and everything uh, is because of uh, the seam actual semen release so you can have everything the same and actually you'll find that your sexual experiences dramatically increased your the, even the size of your your lingam in conjunction with some of the other modalities I recommend like kegels and PRP stem cell um, and with HCG which you use in conjunction with uh, Pelletier T these will increase the size of your lingam um, as more sexual chi energy is comes to these areas because I talk about um, bringing more energy from your chest to your lingam um, as we age, we sort of develop atrophy from weight gain and, and loss of, of muscle. And there's actually a process that happens that where you have decreased uh, um, muscle uh, as uh, as you gain more weight in the with the obesity epidemic. It's sort of a, a spiral that happens. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm on board with you with with getting rid of fat, you know, um, it's really important. And, you know, I just want to tell people, look, I mean, when it comes to anything, whether you're hearing about this for the first time with semen retention or, or it comes to pornography use, or it comes to our diet, you know, put aside everything you've heard or you've been pressured to think by everyone around, you. peer pressure, cultural pressure, corporate pressure, whatever it is that societal pressure, Put that aside and do what you need to do to become the best person you could be. Start fresh with a clean slate, a clear mind, and with God at your side and do what you want to do. Start your own life and let others watch your life pass by and be a model for them just by doing your life without listening to anything anyone says. Because I guarantee you, as you do these practices, people are going to say, wow, what's 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 happening look at this and sometimes it takes a while for people to even get that like my mom when i lost all my weight my fat she still thought i was fat because people haven't adapted yet you know how much weight are we, how much weight are we talking about well i mean i had uh probably another i don't know i think it was around 30 pounds okay um, cool. yeah okay. and i'm kind of at we're Get rid of fat at all costs, you know, yeah. like because it's not helping us. And again, I just um, I think I want to help people like you want to help people. I want nobody should be dying. Nobody should be continuing to live unhealthy lifestyles because they're either afraid or they're being misdirected by society on what they feel is supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So. I just want people to do, to to get their courage to um, and and determination. You know, it's really about. I think all of us need to ask ourselves the question and make the connection between the deep connection between the suffering we're experiencing right now is caused by pornography, by food addiction, by you know these addictions we have, and. Um, and, and make that deep connection, because when you make that deep connection to why you're feeling depressed, 
and why you're feeling, uh, you know, um, you're feeling like your loss of confidence and identity. Um, when you really get it that that's these bad habits are causing this, then that's the key to sustainably over long term quitting these addictions, these dopamine addictions, because what we're talking about is quitting all dopamine addictions that are harming our dopamine levels. We want to have normal, healthy dopamine levels. We want to practice oxytocin through bonding behaviors. Um, that's our goal is to have dopamine, healthy dopamine levels so that we can experience the joys of life and become the best people we can be. Yeah, it's, it's deep. And it's, uh, again, I think it takes a, a, a higher level of commitment to what I want my relationship to look like. And when you start having these kind of conversations, it will strengthen and uh, make that bond stronger. Um, and I, just I, I did that when I yeah. started my relationship. When I first started practicing this, I I educated my partner on it. And at first, she didn't quite understand it, but then she really fell in line with it when she made these connections, because it does take some time. It took time for me to make these connections. It took me a good month to start to really figure this out. A month. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> I can believe it. And, uh, and that's why it's, uh, it's just another opportunity to help us grow as human beings as we learn science, learn how to work with each other to heal. So some quick, you know, kind of, as we're getting close to wrap up, these are easy. We've touched on this. I just want to do some quick, yeah, yeah, yay or nay, yes or no uh, responses to a couple of things that uh, kind of overlap. So, uh, true or false, ED is an old man's problem. <laughs> uh, I do not believe that's true. I refuse to believe that's a that's another uh, cultural myth because uh, yeah. you know, yeah, no. That's right. Um, <laughs> number two, ED requires a specialist to treat. Uh, well, so far I haven't found a specialist that has treated it holistically on a body, mind, soul approach. <laughs> Except <Absolutely>. myself. <laughs> right. So, yeah, and that, and, answers and the that's, question. <laughs> that's right. And I think that's very important. And that's why I believe in a team approach. So if we have some folk in the functional medicine space, maybe, who see the world through a different lens. Obviously, you're in a completely different world and you're kind of innovating. Uh, we need a we need we need some other people to take a look at it. But but again, just depending on one type of specialist is probably not the right answer. Um, ED because be, occurs because of relationship problems. How do you feel about that? Well, hold on, let me go back to that last thing because I want to tell you, even my naturopath doctor prescribed Viagra in the beginning. So yeah. we have a major systemic problem with addressing yeah. holistic sexual health. Okay, yeah. sorry. The next question. <laughs> yeah, no. like uh, is ED um, primarily because of relationship problems? Because of relationship problems. Yeah. Uh, well, no. As I've mentioned, it's it's neurological. It's it can be it can be organic, um, and I have solutions for that for everyone. There's no reason to have to have the kind of stress and fear that I went through, the loss of identity and confidence I went through because I'm, I I laid a, a roadmap for all of you to avoid that. Yep, totally agree. Uh, what about wearing tight underwear causes ED? No, I mean, basically it, it, it can cause temperature differentiation and I, you know, maybe wear boxers, but uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. Maybe it affects fertility. Maybe. Maybe, maybe fertility. Yeah. But yes. it's definitely not yeah. ED. I agree 100%. Yeah. And I'm, I'm bringing these topics up because people have these misperceptions. What about? So many. So many. Uh, ED. I mean, yeah. I want to say on that, that, that actually, I think I'm going to lay this out that our Western culture has most of the fundamentals wrong on every level. Diet, you know. Uh, sex. Um, I'm sorry, but we we are really off base, and I'm trying to turn it back right side up. That's here. right. As I yeah. am, I 100% agree. And I guess the the last one is ED is not dangerous. What's your thoughts on that? 
is it dangerous to have? Well, again, if you, if, what could be dangerous are the underlying causes of ED. Right. That's what go. could be dangerous. It's not a separate thing. People think that sexual health and pharmaceuticals are just this isolated region. It's all, our body is completely connected. It's a fascinating, you know, orchestra of, of bodily systems and parts that, that are interwoven and function together perfectly. I agree. And, and uh, all your answers kind of uh, suit exactly what I was going to, uh, as I was thinking about those questions, I said, yeah, that's kind of how I'm thinking. I'm curious if my, my guest feels the same way. So I appreciate those. And I guess as we kind of wrap up, when it comes to um, the nest and rope, you know, nutrition, exercise, less stress, more sleep, how you think of uh, recovering from trauma, having healthy relationships, avoiding organisms, mm -hmm. pollutants, and protecting your emotions and your life experiences. Mm -hmm. that yeah. really must serve. Where are you on your journey? I know you shared a lot about what got you here, but what's your focus over the next 12 months? Well, I mean, as you can imagine, since I've written a book, book about it, I've been practicing all these healing modalities, and I've yeah. been rec I recommend it to everyone. Um, I recommend reading my book. I recommend if you're going through the fears right now, um, the loss of identity and confidence from ED, um, that you keep my book close close beside you. You highlight it. You refer to it to help you get through this process. Okay. Um, I've shown massive transformations on sexually, uh, through relational health and uh, my mind, body, and soul health spiritually also. Um, and, uh, I've been practicing all these modalities for years and I've seen tremendous transformations with myself. Um, and I'm done, you know, I've looked at myself through testing and I've cleared up any mild calcification and plaque that was gone. Um, you know, uh, my sex life is incredibly healthy. Um, I don't, I, I don't have trauma around it so much anymore I, because it is incredibly traumatic what what happens when when people are going through this and it's really an, an undue diagnosis burden that western medication places on millions of men right now by you know calling them saying they have this sexual dysfunction when really uh you know a lot of it's neurological based from our habits and whatever is organic there are solutions mm -hmm. it's just that and i provide those solutions that's what my book is here for so I'm actually doing very well health health wise, um, and uh, you know I'm my my exercise routine is very strong. Um, my you know uh, when I talk about antioxidants and talk about cardiovascular, my blood flow is excellent. Um, my my blood pressure is is excellent. Um, you know I donate blood regularly. I, I continue to practice all the healing modalities in my book. I refrain from any pornography, even stimuluses that are virtual in nature, because mm -hmm. those of us that go through this no fat journey, uh, we actually embrace reality rather than virtual life. We don't want to be those men that are stuck to their glued to their telephones, uh, their phones and their devices anymore. We want to be living life. We want to face life head on without fear. We want to embrace our passions. Uh, we want to take reclaim that vitality and youth, youthfulness, you know, um, and we want to reclaim our relationships. We want to have healthy, deep, connective relationships in life with our partner and with everyone that's in our life, you know, and with God and with ourselves. Um, but yeah, I've been um, doing quite well on all the different healing modalities and um, I'm continuing to push myself to new levels because uh, you know, that's what I do. I, I'm provided this, these healing modalities for all of you um, through my own uh, process. And um, I continue to just uh, push myself incrementally. Again, I, I don't recommend anyone doing anything drastic in the beginning when it comes to weight training or anything. I recommend, you know, just a slow, methodical process um, because that avoids injury. Other And it also avoids just giving up. You know, a lot of people do a thousand sit-ups and they can't move for a week right. you know it's like we want to avoid that we want to just be consistent on it and that's what i've done i've worked up to you know 200 sit-ups a day 
uh, and uh, you know, I do weight training and I'm not trying to become a giant guy. I'm just trying to uh, have overall physical health. You know, I want to have good blood flow, cardiovascular endothelial system, and I want to have good neurology. Um, yeah. So I hope well, that answers your question. I appreciate all of that. And um, I think this is awesome. And I'm going to let you wrap up. I'm actually going to get my power source, but share with the audience where you can, uh, where people can find you. Uh, you can find me on my website, brookhazen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-E-H-A-Z, like zebra, E-N, like Nancy, brookhazen.com. Um, and that's where you can find links to my book, which will be out April 9th. I have uh, audio in my own voice. Uh, I have uh, paperback and Kindle. Um, I also have it in the, the uh, Kindle and paperback in uh, Spanish and Chinese. Uh, so um, I encourage you to, to buy it and to, again, to refer to it to help you through this process because uh, I understand more than anyone how incredibly difficult this process is overcoming ED and all the myths and preconceptions around it. What I'm doing is trying to empower you that you are not broken by any means. You are actually a powerful and sovereign being capable of uh, accomplishing anything you put your mind to. Well, that was perfect. And thank you for kind of <laughs> allowing me to make that adjustment. So I appreciate you. This has been eye opening. I think anybody who is hearing your voice, uh, I just ask that they open their hearts and their minds to seeing the world through a different lens. I think everything that's made my life better is being open to seeing things differently. And that's why I love having guests like you who share a different perspective. And that perspective is going to hopefully help somebody listening to heal and to maybe even get closer to that special someone. So thank you so much for joining me today. And I really appreciate you. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. And thanks to God. Hey, I, I, that's what I wanted to hear. So thank you so much. And as we wrap up, guys, uh, you know, uh, we appreciate you joining us today. I have, but I do have a question for you. Do you know someone who is interested in having a better se sex life? And if so, this may be the perfect episode to share because, it, you know, we all deserve a healthy sex life. And as you heard from Brooke, there's, it's a little deeper than just sex. So today we learned about some additional ways to improve our sexual health and and, and really gain some new insights that I think will provide hope, you know? And it is my hope, is, is Brooke's hope, that, you know, you won't just sit on the sidelines anymore, but you'll use this newly found knowledge as inspiration, you know, that you can act on so you can start your path towards uh, a healthy sexual life. So rather you do this by purchasing Brooke's book or, uh, you know, having a conversation with your clinician who understands that there are different approaches. I hope that you take advantage of this opportunity to do just that. So again, so happy that you guys joined us today. And as I conclude, I only ask that you continue to be safe, be well, and continue to protect your nest.